Hi there, this is a Catherine's Chit Chat or a Catherine's whatever. I would usually do this on my couch, but it is really dark out there. Uh, and I would have to move all of the lights out into the living room for you guys to even see me. And I'm not going to do that because I've got somebody coming over to clean in a wee bit. And I'd have to move everything around in order for me to do that. But... As I've been tidying up, okay, who doesn't tidy up before their cleaning person comes? If you are one of those people who don't, please don't throw a stone at me. And today I'm going to talk about the possibility that we are giving other people fodder to throw stones at friends of ours who don't deserve to be stoned. Okay, so what am I talking about? There, is, there are many cultures in the world who hold a great importance on the sacredness of somebody's life story. In Christian circles, we call those testimonies, and they quite often involve talking about what our life used to be like, some of the things that we did, wrong choices that we might have made that led us to a place where we realized that we needed to change. And as Christians, many of us, the catalyst for change came when we surrendered our lives and our hearts and striving to do everything to make our lives good into the hands of God. As most of you know, I'm an author, and the devotionals that I have written that are in my three books include some of those testimonies of people that have really gone through rough times and how God has helped them through those rough times. I have been very careful, and as a matter of fact, I even went through and removed some of those stories at the very last moment because I realized I couldn't contact that individual to make sure that it was okay with them that I shared it. And even though I make sure to remove anything that would identify that individual to other people, I still am careful with the stories that people tell because their stories are sacred to my heart. And I never assume that any private conversation I have with another individual gives me permission to share what was shared in that conversation, even if that conversation, there was nothing negative shared, if that makes any sense. Now, it's a little bit different with my close group of friends. And believe me, I have a very small, close group of friends in my life off the internet because I'm an introvert. And introverts, we usually dig deep into relationships, but we don't have dozens of personal friends in our immediate circle. Within my circle of friends, sometimes we're talking and we'll share good news about what's going on in somebody's life, but that's within a circle where we all trust each other, we all know each other, that kind of stuff. I would never ever share anything that they share with me in something that I might publish on my website or in social media of any type unless they themselves have shared it first in a public arena of some sort. Why? Because in today's world, there are some misguided individuals who look for code words that they can grab hold of to dig up as much information about somebody's distant past or even not so distant past in order to discredit the good things that they're doing now or to try to destroy the good things that are going on in their lives right now. So here's some code words that I try to avoid when I am praising somebody who is in my life or somebody who I admire, who I know um, have come through some really difficult times and who have made some bad decisions in their past, but they've turned away from those bad decisions and now they're 
doing really good things in their lives and God is really blessing them in ways that they never expected. So here are some of the code words that I try not to use. I'd like you to meet so-and-so. You would not believe how much they have done in their lives to overcome their past. That's just a red flag. Let's dig. What are they talking about? Hi, you know, I, I admire so-and-so so much. Boy, are they ever a changed person. Change, again, red flag for those who want to dig up the distant past. Even using the word like, oh, I love a really good redemptive story and boy is so-and-so story ever a redemptive story. Code word for, what are they redeemed from? Oh my gosh, this person must have done something. Let's dig it up. If they haven't done anything really bad, let's dig it up anyhow and let's blow it up and put a lot of speculation and let's start a YouTube hating on that in individual. You get the idea? I think it's important to give people the chance to tell their own tales. If they feel the need to give a short testimony or a long one of what God has done in their lives, what they've been redeemed from, then let them go for it. But again, if anybody would ask me, hey, did you hear about so-and-so and did you see that video? And they come to me and say, hey, do you know anything more about their story? I would say, leave a comment and ask that individual themselves. And if they feel free to share it, they will share it because their story is their story to tell. And it's not my story for me to tell. So I guess what I'm saying here is just be really careful with the way that you talk about others, even if you want to praise them or speak good about them, try to speak about the good in their lives today and the good that they're doing for others today. And try not to use those code words that those who live to dig up the dirt on others would use to try to destroy the freedom that somebody has fought so hard for.